Yo, what's up, everybody? I'm Bob Walters. Welcome to the Locked Up Sports Weekend Wrap-Up. Rough weekend for the Mets as they get swept by Toronto. The Yankees finish off their West Coast trip with a win and a series win over the Dodgers tonight on Sunday Night Baseball. The Golden Knights take a 1-0 series lead on the Florida Panthers in the Stanley Cup Finals. And wow, what a basketball game we saw tonight. Game 2 of the NBA Finals as the Heat draw even and they are heading home tied 1-1 with now a real chance to win the NBA title, which is crazy, crazy. They, they, listen, they hit big shots tonight. This Duncan Robinson, he broke his wrist earlier this year. He came all the way, he came back. He lost his spot in the rotation earlier this year. Now he's a bench player. He comes in in the fourth quarter. Ice cold, sat around all game. He comes in in the fourth quarter, and he drains big threes. He makes great cuts to the basket. Uh, I mean, he scores 10 points off the bench in the fourth quarter alone. You have Bam, who had two clutch, clutch free throws down the stretch. When Denver drew close to within one possession, Bam hit the two free throws to put it back up to the two possessions. Jimmy Butler, of of course, played well. He hit big shots down the stretch, and in the fourth quarter, the Heat just dominated. They outscored Denver 36-25 to in the fourth quarter. And what can you say? This Heat team, just they never say die. They, they, they fight. They, they got a great coach. I mean, at halftime, it looked like this game wasn't over. Michael Wilbon was on the TV at halftime. The halftime show saying that Denver was bigger, stronger, faster, more talented. Uh, Miami was overmatched. He wasn't sure they were going to even compete. In this second half. Well, they did more than compete. They came out. They played an even third quarter. And then in the fourth quarter, they just dominated the game. Dominated the game. And still, Denver had a chance at the end. Down three. They get the ball off the rebound with 12 seconds left. You get Jamal Murray. Dribbles it. Takes it up the court. Now you have a bunch of decisions here you could make on both sides. Okay, you have Denver. Do you call a timeout? Advance the ball set up a play do you try and not call a timeout catch the defense maybe in transition a little confused what are you going to do they decided to go that route now miami their decisions are do you foul or do you not foul and they chose not to foul they had butler on murray playing defense he played good defense murray still got up a good shot it just didn't go in and you know just like that now we're one one heading back to miami They come in here, they do exactly what they needed to do. They just needed to get a split. And that's exactly what they did. Now they have home court. Denver's going to have to win a game in Miami, which, I listen, I still think Denver's going to win this series. Denver's the more talented team. They did not play well in the fourth quarter. And like I said, as well as Miami played, and as much as they dominated that fourth quarter, Denver still had a shot at the gun to tie it and send it to overtime. So, but listen, give give, Den, give Miami all the credit in the world. Give Spolster. I mean, he's a great, great coach. Spolster made the adjustments because, like I said, in the first half, they, there was not much they could do. They jumped out to a 12-point lead in the first quarter, and it was a race like that. By the end of the first quarter, it was a three-point lead. And then in the second quarter, Denver just blew past them. And it didn't look like Miami was going to ever get the lead back. And they didn't get it back until, oh, about 10 minutes left in the fourth quarter. So the whole time, for much of the game, Denver dominated. But in short spurts, Miami dominated Denver, and they hit their shots. I mean, listen, Duncan Robinson was the key to this game, coming in in that fourth quarter, getting 10 points. Like I said, he had big threes. He had a three out of top of the key. He had a three from the left wing. He made big cut to the basket where he got a pass. I believe it was I believe it was Adebayo who made the pass to him. Up for an easy layup. I mean, listen, he did everything. And good for him. This is it. This was his moment tonight. And he stole the game. And he stole the fourth quarter. And he stole home court advantage away from Denver. And now we have a series. And it went from a long, long shot. Miami to win this thing to now people are actually talking about Miami could win the title and what you know an eight seed you never see that in the NBA the Knicks were the only other eight seed to make it to the finals lost in seven games to Houston 
And listen, Denver, Denver, the coach was calling him out after the game, saying low effort, no effort. This is the NBA Finals. This isn't a preseason. So they got him. Listen, the Heat got him rattled a little bit. The Heat got him on their heels. They got him thinking. You know, this isn't going to be a cakewalk. Jokic went for 42 tonight, and they still lost. And Van Gundy made a good point. The big number is not the 42. Jokic got his 42. He's going to get his points. The big number was four assists because he only had four assists. Denver also turned the ball over 15 times. Listen, if they do that, the Heat's going to win. The Heat's going to win games if they, if they don't play their game. Now, if Denver plays their game, they're going to win this series because they're a better team. they got better players. But if you slip up, Miami's going to be there to take advantage, and they've done that all postseason. They did it tonight. They got contributions from guys you would never think would be making contributions, and they stole home court advantage, and they stole game two, and they get a split. And we head back to Miami Uh, Wednesday is game three Friday game four and we'll see how it goes I mean listen it's interesting it's very interesting it's a fascinating final it's a fascinating NBA final Um, I had to go with that first but listen the 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 Mets big big trouble big big trouble with the Mets listen I think the Mets I think they're a 500 team okay to go in there and get swept this weekend in a big series. Listen, it was a big series because they just swept Philadelphia. They've been an inconsistent team the entire season. And what do they do? They get, they sweep Philadelphia. They come in now and Toronto sweeps them. It's the, it's, they're a 500 team. They have all the red flags. I don't know why people aren't just noticing the red flags and just saying what it is. They're a 500 team. They're probably going to be in it. Until, you know, through the summer. Maybe they squeak into the playoffs. Maybe they don't. But this is not the team that we expected. The bullpen blows another one today. The Mets, Senga, on four days rest, first time, or five days rest. First time ever pitching on regular rest. And he can't do it? What what the hell is that? Four or five days you can't pitch? How many days do they give them in Japan? It's not a week. Listen, you can't come over here. If you can't pitch within five days of each other and pitch decent games, then there's no need for you here because we're not giving you six or seven days like they did in Japan. He was lost today. Senga could not find the strike zone. He couldn't. He was walking the ballpark. Before you know it, it was 2 nothing, 4 nothing, and he was out. Then the Mets battled back as Tommy Pham all of a sudden has become Babe Ruth. He hit two home runs today. He got them right back in the game, 4-4. And what happens? The bullpen blows it. The same thing. The bullpen blows it, and it's another backbreaking loss because that's what happens when you have a bad bullpen. The losses are just backbreaking. Today, same thing. They fought all the way back. You get a home run by Alonzo. Who, you know what? Alonzo's been slumping, too. But Alonzo's got 21 home runs. He leads the league. Lindor. Listen, I'm getting sick of Lindor. Thirty-five million dollars to what? Hit two oh five and drive in. And, you know he drives in runs, but two oh five or two ten, whatever, whatever he's at now, he's going to be at two hundred by the end of the Brave series. I was there Friday night. Uh, Bassett, listen, you can't let Bassett come in there and, and throw that game. He barely hit ninety on the gun all night. He was throwing nothing but junk. And the Mets looked awful. They could not get a hit. They hit maybe they one and one two balls out of the infield the whole night. They couldn't get nothing going. Verlander pitched excellent. Verlander was great. He gave up the leadoff home run in the first and then shut it down. And what happened? The bullpen. The bullpen came in, a walk, two run homer. Three nothing game over, and then Saturday we put in in your Hall of Fame class. You got all the alumni there. You got Gary, Howie, Leiter, Hojo, all going into the Hall of Fame. And what do you do? You play well. They played well. It was a good ball game. And then the ninth inning comes around, and Robinson can't get an out. You got Guerrero, who give him credit. He had a good pitch. 
down the third base line, snuck it inside the line. He looks just like his father, by the way. He hits just like his father. He plays just like his father. And he had been slumping. And he hit one inside the third base bag. Game over again by the bullpen. Three games. Three games this weekend. Three games blown by the bullpen. Now, I get it. I know. They don't have offense. The offense is not not producing anything. Okay, Alvarez is struggling. Lindor is trash. Lindor's hitting just above the Mendoza line, making $35 million. Alonzo has kind of been slumping as well. He had a home run today. He's got 21, but you can let Alonzo slide. He leads the league in homers. He had a big first two months of the season. Okay, he's slumping now. I can live with that. I mean, the Mets are being carried by Tommy Pham. He's the only reason I wasn't a 6 nothing game today. And, I mean, listen, this team, I think they're just a fight. I think this is what they are, to be honest with you. Now, there was a report, New York Post, Mike Vaccaro also reported it today, that yesterday after the game, there was a big blowout in Steve Cohen's office with in a meeting with Buck, Apparently, he threw Steve Cohen through a chair. Now, listen, I don't know. I don't know how much. I don't know if I believe that, to be honest with you. Steve Cohen doesn't strike me as the kind of guy to be throwing chairs around. He doesn't strike me as the Bobby Knight type, right? But the report has been confirmed. We'll see. I mean, I don't know. People are now calling the fire buck. I don't think that that is the right decision. I mean, he won manager of the year last year. It's only 60 games. But I don't think this team is going anywhere. I think they're a 500 team. I think this is what they are. They've been floating around 500 now for a while. Five games below. They go five, you know, a couple games over. They get back to 500. You know, they sweep the Phillies. Then they get swept. That's what 500 teams do. They're average. They got enough talent to make, you know, to win ball games. But just too much, too much... You know, the bullpen is terrible. And like I said, this weekend, it, it was all bullpen. And also, I mean, to let Chris Bassett come in here and give him credit. His wife was in labor. He left immediately after the game. He went immediately after leaving the game. He went right to the airport and down to wherever his wife is. Um, <clears throat> she gave birth, I guess, the, the, this, this evening. But for to let him throw eight shutout innings. And he... I. The Mets looked awful. Like I said, he barely touched 90 on the gun. The Mets barely got the ball out of the infield. It was not It was not a pretty sight. You got Vogel back starting. He's getting booed. You got the Mets with first and third, one out. They're down one nothing. I believe it was the fourth or sixth inning. They're down one nothing. First and third, nobody out. How do you not get a run in? I've been I've seen now multiple multiple times this year them get bases loaded nobody out not get runs home on Friday it was first and third nobody out we, Lindor first and third nobody out Lindor at the plate and he looks at two strikes right down the middle he can't even get the bat off his shoulder thirty five million a year to not even get the bat off his shoulder give me a break. And you know what? And then the defense on Saturday from Lindor can't even get in front of a, a two hopper. I know they ruled it a base hit, but that's an error. That was an error. In the major leagues, that's an error. I'm sorry. That play's got to be made. If you're the shortstop of a major league baseball team, you have to make that play. He went to the side. He played it to the side. It bounced right over his glove. The first thing they tell you in Little League, Little League is get in front of it, knock it down. He let it go by him. And then you got Alvarez today throwing balls in the center field. It, listen, it's not pretty. It's not pretty, and it's not going to get any better as they go down now to Atlanta. Somehow, some way, they are th- only three and a half out. And the reason they're only three and a half out is because Atlanta's not playing great. Okay, Atlanta's five and five in their last 10. The Mets are five and five in their last 10. Marlins, watch out for the Marlins because they're coming. The Marlins have who have a payroll of pennies compared to the Mets or a better baseball team than the New York Mets. And it's 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 ridiculous. And it's frustrating to watch. And you know, we've been watching it for years. And I, I don't I don't think it's gonna get better. I think this is who they are. I think they'll they'll be okay. 
you know, they're a 500 team. They'll win 80, 85 games. But coming off of a season where you won 101 games, and then you crapped the bed in the playoffs in the first round, and you lost to the Padres, and your ace pitcher, Scherzer, went out there and threw, gave up seven, eight runs. Come back this year, and high expectations, and now that they, you know, they're falling flat on their face. Do I think Cohen was throwing chairs around a room in a meeting with Showalter? No. But do I think he's probably pissed and disappointed? I do. He's a Mets fan. And he, he listen, he feels it just like we do. You know he does. So that's what the Mets. The, um, listen, they, got, they go to Atlanta, right? Let's see. They sweep Atlanta. They only be a half game out. But, <laughs> you know, they Mets... Good Mets teams don't win in Atlanta. All right, last year. Last year was a good Mets team. 101 wins. They didn't win in Atlanta. So do I have any faith that they're going to go in here, to, you know, this week and come away with an even two out of three? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. So, we'll, I mean, we'll see. The Yankees, on the other hand, the Yankees finished up a West Coast trip tonight. They finished it up nine-game trip. Seattle, San Diego, the Dodgers. They finished six and three. They won all three series. Judge makes a, a ridiculous run through the wall catch, breaks the fence. Volpe hits a big home run tonight. They get it. They got a big bid today. It was a big pitcher's duel. Thing was scoreless in the sixth, seventh inning. And the Yankees are are the exact moving in the exact opposite direction as the Mets because the Yankees are playing well. They've hit their stride. Judge has now ninth has 20 home runs. Judge sat out a month and he has 20 home runs. He's making catches. He's he's possibly in the lead for a gold glove out in right field. I mean, and that that that's what you know pisses you off even more as a Mets fan. Because now you gotta listen to the Yankee fans. And you're gonna have to. Because what are you gonna say? As the Mets crash and burn, and the Yankees, you know, win ball games and win series. That's what that that's what the Yankees did. Mets would go out on the West Coast. Mets were six and sixteen after their good West Coast trip. See, that's the difference. Is the Met the Mets will have a good stretch, a short good stretch, and then they'll just lose. You know, they can't back it up. And I had said on Friday on the show that it was important that they back up that sweep of the Phillies with a good weekend. You don't even have to sweep the the Toronto. But you couldn't come in here and get swept. Win two out of three, back it up, then go into Atlanta with a little momentum. They couldn't do it. They didn't do it. They got swept. They couldn't hit. They couldn't field. They couldn't throw the ball. They were throwing the ball around the infield. And the bullpen put the icing on the cake and just blew all three games. And today was a, I mean, today was a perfect example. You get Fam, who hits two home runs. Fam, who I was running off this team, but, well, you know, whatever. Still don't want him on the team. But he, he hits two home runs, ties the game. They come all the way back. They were dead in the second inning of this game. Come all the way back, 4-4. And then the, the bullpen blows it. I mean, you know what, Robins, uh, Robertson's not, Robertson has been great. All year, he's done more than we could ever ask. But lately, he has not been great. Lately, he's not been great. Let's be real. He hasn't been great. Now, the Yankees, the Yankees are, what are they? 36 and 25. The Yankees at 36 and 25 are still six and a half behind the Rays. So they're still six and a half behind the Rays. Herman tonight, excellent. Herman went, let's see. What was his final line? Six and two thirds, one run, four hits, six strikeouts, and a walk. That's what Herman did. What happened when the bullpen came in? Holmes, an inning with no hits and a walk, and and yeah, and and Wandy Peralta. And just like that, the Yankees win. They take two out of three from the Dodgers. They win all three series on the West Coast trip. <laughs> I mean. The Yankees are playing well. Like I said, Judge is on fire and Judge is carrying the team. Volpe is playing well. That was a big home run tonight by Volpe to give them a little breathing room. 
So the Yankees still six and a half out. Now this week, now the Yankees get to go home. They're going to get an off day tomorrow, travel day, back to New York. And they will play. Uh, hold on. Who do they play? Chicago. So they have Chicago coming in for uh, three. And then next weekend, you got the Red Sox into the Bronx. So, so a six-game homestand for the Yankees. Coming off this West Coast trip, they got Chicago, who they can absolutely beat up on, and the Red Sox, who are not very good. The Yankees are going to be 20 games over 500 before you know it, and the Mets are going to still be, you know, float right around the 500 mark because that's what the teams are. Just like players usually play to the back of their baseball card, teams will usually show you who they are. And we're at the point now, you pass Memorial Day, you're coming up on, you know, you're more than a quarter of the way through the season. The Mets have not played well. Now, can they fix it? They can. And I saw something today about people. Listen, Buck's not getting fired. That, that's not the problem. Buck's not the problem. The bullpen's got to be fixed. Lindor, I think, will come out of it. But, I mean, now you've got three months into the season, and Lindor's hitting 200. Like, it's going to take a lot to get that average back up. And I know everybody points to the, the, the RBIs and the, and the hitting with runners and scoring position. He has it. Listen. When you're hitting 200, you can't say he hits with runners in scoring position because you don't hit at all. You make an out eight out of ten times. If one of those two times it happens to be a runner on second or third, I mean, it's still not, it's still not acceptable. And they, they won't even drop him in the batting order. He plays every day. You got to drop him in the batting order, right? Not even that. So, I mean, listen. It's not good. For the Mets, it is good for the Yankees. Six and three is more than you could ask for. And especially in a series where you're playing both, especially in a road trip where you're playing both San Diego and the Dodgers. Because to go in there into San Diego and into LA, Chavez Ravine, and take two out of three and two out of three, and the only game they lost to Seattle, they lost that one nothing game. So the Yankees are, you know, rolling along. I don't know if it's going to be enough. They didn't get off to a great start. I don't know if they're going to be able to catch the Rays. Because the Rays are playing well. The Orioles are playing well. Yankees still in third place. The AL East is by far the best division in baseball. The NL East is one of the worst. The NL East is, which was supposed to be hands down. Mets, Braves, Phillies fighting for it. Three big teams, 100 wins. No. I don't think either any of the teams in the NL East are going to touch 100 wins. So we'll see. The Mets, uh, Yankees day off tomorrow, then the White Sox in for three, and then a weekend series with the Red Sox here in the Bronx. So it'll be fun next weekend. You know, it's the first time the Red Sox are in. The Red Sox are not a very good team. So it'll probably be fun there next weekend. Big crowds at the stadium as now people, the Yankees will start picking up momentum. And... The question is, can they catch the Braves? I, and I don't know the answer. I don't know the answer. But for everybody that's looking to fire Buck in the Mets situation, don't waste your breath. He's not going anywhere. And who are you going to replace him with? Who, 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 who are they going to get? You got Beltran come in here? Come on. Buck will straighten it out. You know, maybe, maybe it's not their year. Maybe they sneak in. Because with all the playoff teams there, maybe he could sneak in. And the Yankees might have to sneak in, too. Because they're in an excellent division. The Orioles are for real. And we all know the Rays are for real. They're for real every year. So we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Um, last night, the NHL Stanley Cup Finals got underway. As you know, I'm um, all over the, the Panthers. They got beat. Panthers got beat. There was some... Listen, there was some, a couple great saves, a couple lucky saves by the goaltender, the Golden Knights goaltender. The Panthers, they got too many penalties. They, you know, you can't give this Golden Knights team a power plays because they're going to take advantage. They're a good team. It's okay. It's only game one. They lost 5-2. It was closer than, than, it, than the score indicates. And, you know, it's going to be just like the Heat. If the Panthers could steal game two, ooh, if the Panthers could steal game two, they'll be fine. You know, it, it, momentum's not going to carry 
to the next game. So go in there, win game two, and you get home ice and then go back to Florida. So, South, like I said, South Florida is the hotbed for these winter sports this year. You got two underdog teams making great runs in the Heat and the Panthers. And it's been a lot of fun. The Heat did their part tonight with the win, evening up the series. Let's see what the Panthers could do tomorrow. Because that's a tough place to play in Vegas. That place is loud. It's a tough place to play. It's not like football where the, the crowd really affects it too much, but it is a tough place to go in there and win. And Florida got out the lead. You know, they, they got a shorthanded goal in the first period. It was one nothing, And then five minutes later, Vegas tied it up, and, and the way they went. The goalie, the save the goalie made, and here it is right here. That was unbelievable. With the paddle of the stick. And, you know, he's, he, the goalie's beatable. Because he's out of position all the time. He's out of position on the wraparound goal and the shorthanded goal. He was out of position on the save he made with the, the unbelievable paddle save with his stick where he reached back. So he's out of position. He's someone that you can, he's a he's a kid. You gotta get you gotta just pepper him with shots if you if you're the Panthers. But you know, listen, they know what they're doing. They you know they didn't get here by accident. So that uh, I believe that tomorrow was game two in that series. So that pretty much does it for me here. Um, listen, we want to thank Mark Healy for coming on this weekend. If you haven't seen the show from Friday, with me and Brett, check it out. Uh, excellent, excellent conversation. Mets talk. Uh, it was a lot of fun. We enjoyed the show. We thank him for coming on. Next week, uh, they, well, actually later this week, we got Friday. Uh, again, me and Brett will be back with an all-new episode Friday. Uh no guest plan as of yet. But listen, we got NBA Finals. We got NHL Stanley Cup Finals. We might be handing out the hardware right around Friday. Not in the NBA. NBA Friday will be game four. But um, I don't know if we're going to be able to do the show before game four. We'll see. We'll see how it works. If we're going to do a Friday or Saturday. Uh, we'll, we'll see how the Mets do this week. Into Atlanta. I mean, I guess, I guess you got to get two out of three, right? You know, you don't want to lose ground here. You can't get swept. You can't go in there three and a half and come out six and a half. So, well, like I said, I'm, I'm not I'm, I'm not too confident that the Mets are going to do anything the way they're playing. Eventually, they'll come out of it. I mean, their best player right now is Tommy Pham. What does that say? Verlanders did his part. The, the starting pitching has, has gotten better. And how Mets is it that Chris Bassett, you know, the one guy that leaves, comes back and, you know, former Met. Now good, Chris Bassett. Just add him to the list. Former Met, now good, throw Chris Bassett on the list. So that does it for us here. Um, that's it. I'll talk, I'll talk to you Friday with Brett. Have a good week, everybody. Enjoy work. Stay safe. We'll talk to you Friday. See ya.